Good evening, everybody. Uh, we have one hearing scheduled for tonight, but before we start, uh, is anybody here from the public who has anything to say, any comments, questions on anything that has uh, anything to do with other than the hearing that's about to come before us tonight? No? Okay, then we will start the proceedings tonight with a, what was scheduled that's for 7 o'clock, um, for a site plan amendment to expand the parking lot at 766 mm -hmm. North King Street, Northampton Map ID 821. And do we have a presentation from somebody? Yep. Hi, good evening. My name is Jeff Eli. I'm um, just the uh, manager, one of the owners of the building, but also the general manager of Pine Pine and Sports Physicians, which is um, the second floor tenant of the building. There's two other tenants. Um, Dr. Mary Pat Roy and Ear, Nose, and Throat Associates. The uh, building's been in existence for, I think, about six or seven years. I forget exact date. Um, we've uh, we built the building for the use that it's being um, uh, used now. Uh, the issue is, is that we just want to, we've got the accessible land. Um, when we built the building, we had a total of 49 spaces, 33 uh, general use and six handicapped parking spaces um, and over the last seven years the businesses have somewhat grown but um, more than anything we just want to use the available land that we have there um, just to increase accessibility and convenience for the patients that use that um, it's uh, it's it's kind of simple I mean we've got the the, the land is there we're not looking to uh, to do any blasting we're not looking to bring any big excavations we've got a, a small piece of land about 12 feet to the back that is already leveled there's already two catch basins there all we're looking to do is just um, when we repave the lot which we're planning on doing in the spring we just want to push back about 12 feet just to increase um, and pick up between we're hoping between six to ten reality is we'll probably pick up about eight parking spaces and again it's just for the convenience of our patients um, just so the board does know we've looked at every alternative uh, there's the Sunoco station next to us we've approached them on three different occasions they have quite a bit of land that they don't use we asked them to lease uh, lease us their spots, rent us spots, um, but they refuse to uh, to let us use any of the land there for parking. Um, we did look at trying to um, have our employees and the employees of the building shuttle to another site so there's more patient parking, but the reality is that that's not convenient and, and it's really not safe and ideal. So, um, and ultimately we decided that we needed to redo the parking lot. It's uh, this winter particularly, it's taken a beating with, uh, with the conditions. Um, so when we do repave it in the spring, we're just looking to expand to the land that we already have. Um, that's it. A couple questions. You started when it was originally constructed, you had, there were 49 spaces roughly? I believe so, yes. And now uh, it looks like you're shooting for 59? It says 59. The reality is I think it, it'll probably be 50, 57. I mean, I think if we pick up eight more spaces, I think we'll be fine. There is, we're hoping, um, depending on the board tonight, obviously we're hoping that it's approved. Um, I've been in contact with the state of Massachusetts about possibly putting an electric car charging station there. Um, there is some uh, grants available, so I've contacted them. Um, we're trying to you know, if we're going to do this, we'd like to do it and so that it's convenient and make that accessible. So that's one of the um, one of the spots that's taken. It it looks in like in the middle where the existing parking is now. The new layout, you're trying to squeeze a couple more spots in that that center. We do have there's a couple of spots that the engineers determined are wider than than they need to be, um, and we've seen that that so that when we go to repave it. He did say that we could repave it in such a manner that we might be able to pick up a couple of spots. We're not going to do it to the point that, you know, um, that people can't park conveniently. So that's why if we determine that it's just not going to fit, I think the 59 could become 57. The, the convenience factor is the one issue I was thinking of because you have typical parking spaces, spaces you have as a nine-foot width, which is standard. 
but in the middle it looks like there's maybe eight, seven or eight spaces here that are down to eight and a half feet. Yeah, and that's like tiny. We may Is not go that route. Cars or yeah, um, we've got the handicapped parking spaces. Obviously, those are untouchable. We want to pick up a few more. Um, we do see more and more people. Um, one of the uh, things that's being offered now is a pediatric clinic. It, there's, unfortunately, there is there's uh, the Shriners Hospital in Springfield has cut way back on their pediatric services. We have people coming as far as Worcester to be um, with their children to be uh, seen for a specialty pediatric, uh, and they do come in a van, so uh, that requires a little bit more space. Uh, we want to make that available. Um, but ultimately, if we determine that those spaces are not as wide as they need to be, and we would mark some out for compact cars, but ultimately, if they're not, then then those spaces would be would be diminished by two to to bring them back up to nine feet yep. width. Just so you know, our, our standard is eight and a half by eight feet, so okay. it still meets the um, zoning okay. standard. Questions from anybody? Were there staff comments on this, or I didn't see any? Okay. No, I, I mean, our recommendation is for approval. There's, you know, it's all sort of within the paved footprint, except for that little bit behind the building, and um, there's lots of undeveloped land, so it's, there's no issue with open space. And I think we all know that a uh, medical office has a higher demand for parking and, and other uses. So. Yeah, that was my only question, is what degree of lot coverage is there of paved surface? Do you know what it is or what will be? Uh, I'm sorry, what's the percentage of land that's uh, not open? I don't want to give you the wrong percentage. I don't have it off the top of my head. Um, look in the, it's probably in the um, application, sorry. Um, but the lot goes up the hill. There's quite a uh, large hill that so goes up, and we did, we did actually <clears throat> ex excavate in. The gentleman um, who did the excavation is here. There is no ledge back there. That was one of the considerations, but we did determine that it would be prohibitively expensive to go back into that lot. The retaining wall alone, I think, for something that big would have been in the hundreds of thousands of dollars and I don't think would have been practical. I don't remember it being a concern before when we approved it. But. Um, we've actually reduced the open space. Um, requirements in HB since then it was 20 percent originally and now it's more just about the buffers and the landscaping so it's it certainly doesn't there's no implication in terms of the zoning ordinance so as it is you're pushing back into the hillside building a retaining wall in the back the retaining wall would only be I, I if you want to call it that it's about a three-foot wall it's basically so people don't just keep driving into the hill <laughs> It looks like it's a eight foot wall no it's uh, I think it's there's a there's one around the side of the building would be um, there's a, um, a retaining wall eight foot wall there the remaining wall that we're pushing back would only be a three four maybe five feet at most because they've got a fit a finish elevation on the pavement of 199 and top of wall elevation of 207 along the back of the parking lot the whole length 207 which it's irrelevant but that's a good size I wall. Think he, yeah he put that I don't know if it'll ultimately be that I think he he put that just so that it that was the most it would be mm -hmm. we're hope, certainly hoping it's not going to be that he told me he estimated it be about three or four between three and four feet okay. I mean I didn't have any issues with it other than potentially a convenience factor of eight and a half foot spaces, but that's up to, to them to decide if it works or doesn't work. Yeah. Will there be any change in lighting? Or is it? You do show the lighting is, would be the same, actually. The, um, the, the, the lights that are there um, actually go out into the hill where we would be anyway. So there's no more, there's, uh, there's no additional lighting that would be required. But you're relocating the lights. We're are. relocating too, just for convenience to, to get them out of we do we've had a couple of instances where tractor trailers on the weekends decide to use our lot to turn around and they've taken out a couple of poles <clears throat> any questions anybody any questions from the public 
move to close the public hearing. Second. All right, uh, all in favor? Okay, public session is closed. Frandy again. Everyone here? Frandy. I don't have the sheet. Oh, come on. Oh, oh yes, I do have. Oh, she took it. That's it. That's not the one. Where's the agenda? <laughs> you want me to? <laughs> this is my final act. Okay, I move we approve the site plan amendment to expand parking at parking lot at 766 North King Street, Northampton. Map ID ID 8-21. All in favor? Or I need a second. Second. Sorry. All in favor. <laughs> There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice night. Yeah, you too. Um, oh. All right. I got it. So, did. Um, had four. <laughs> um, did I email the latest zoning, the changes, right, to the um, special permit? Um, Yes, I yes. did. Ooh, that's tiny. Do you, so do you want me to go over that? That's basically the only other thing. I have the subdivision regs, but I only got a chance to print one copy so I so you can look at it because DPW, we're going to sit down with DPW next week after all of those. So, um, but the special permit um, criteria for the construction of more than seven units in B and C, um, we modified and mostly by adding that last bullet um, under nine uh, to talk about um, to address design um, and that was those a lot of those ideas sort of came out of the public um, meeting we had on the um, with the um, Lyman Road um, South Street neighborhood uh, relative to the potential redevelopment um, issues that might arise for the Lyman estate. So, um, I mean, it was quite a good uh, turnout and there was lots of good discussion about um, concerns about providing both um, smaller and age in place housing um, as well as um, some additional design criteria, but I think it was, a, it was a really productive meeting in that regard. So we decided to, um, because they don't just apply to the Lyman Estate, we thought it might be beneficial to also apply them right now as we're moving forward on this special permit criteria. So I don't know if you guys had a chance to look at that, if you had questions or. Um, I, I don't see, I don't think I have what you have. I have the ordinance. Two well, things. I had it in ordinance format, and it was okay. two pages. So officially, so that we could go ahead and I could oh, just I, email it to city council. I mean, do you want to walk us through those? Yeah, let me just pull it up on my screen. Sorry. Was this was this um, after any input from the ward three people? Because that those were that was sort of the driving force behind the moratorium, right? Right. Um, so, well, the um, meeting at, up about the Lyman Estate incorporates ward th parts of Ward 3, too, uh -huh, right. so there were people there. Uh -huh. um, and um, I think, you know, originally, basically, based on what their comments were before we came back to you, that was a lot of that, uh, the original drafting of this language was based on comments from or three association. Mm -hmm. So we had already sort of done that exercise, and this was um, adding on to that and refining it. Yeah. Councillor O'Donnell was there. What's that? The new Councillor O'Donnell oh, okay. was there. At the Lyman meeting? Uh, so hold on just one second. OK, here okay. we go. Um, so. Um, if we go through, so um, the, everything um, stayed the same from your the draft that you guys already reviewed up until bullet point eight and nine. So we've added 
So this is, de again, design criteria for uh, projects that entail seven or more um, units on a parcel. And originally, the, there was a split in the language. If you remember um, the language adopted, there was a split between construction of seven units and construction of 10 units. And this, the, the goal for he, this is just to simplify it and say anything over seven, you have to follow all these criteria instead of um, creating that sort of second tier. So number eight, um, buildings shall um, be either, sort of there's a laundry list of, of ways to comply with this, um, U.S. Green Building Council lead new construction certified or be U.S. Green Building Council lead new development um, certified um, or 15 percent of the units um, I'm sorry I should go back to um, I want to explain a and B before I move on so there was a lot of discussion and um, Deb and you can probably fill in on that that people were concerned about making sure that these were that anytime we we're building new bigger projects that they be energy um, efficient to the greatest extent possible um, and um, so I, I don't know if this got out of order here. I guess um, C was 15% of the units to meet the zoning definition of affordability or that all buildings should be net zero construction of HERS rating of zero. Um, or 50% or more of the units are no larger than 1,200 square feet gross floor area for at least five years from certificate of occupancy. I mean, that's a lot of language about how to structure a unit, but it's sort of a, um, a pick list um, to try to get at those goals that people were trying to, um, you know, reach. Yeah, so I have a comment about the uh, A and B. Uh -huh. um, you know, if, it's, if, if the goal was to, to make them as energy efficient as possible, I, I don't know that the lead rating system is going to get you there. Um, you can have a lead certified building, you can have a lead gold building, and it can still use a lot of energy. So one other issue I have with, with the municipality you know, having this as a requirement, I, I mean, I know it's an or, but, but still, and it's, you know, there's a lot of uh, conversation out there about, about a municipality or anyone requiring LEED certification when U.S. Green Building Council is a private industry. It's a private company. Mm -hmm. So you're making people <laughs> give money to a private company. So there's, there's yeah. issues there. I might suggest maybe saying that it has to be such a percentage over the stretch code, the energy okay. stretch code. Right. It yeah. might get you maybe more where you want to be. Yeah. I think that's a good thought. I mean, there ha actually was conversation in that meeting about whether, I mean, LEED is sort of the only industry standard now for mm -hmm. that, but there are, but just like you said, just because you have lead points doesn't mean you're really totally energy efficient. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are a whole bunch of other ways to increase your carbon footprint, even if you have lead points. Yeah. Right. Like fast food restaurants, for example, that have to be lead certified. <laughs> One way around that, because I'm, I am a, a lead approved person that's never done it, mm -hmm. and the demanding that it be certified is an awful lot of paperwork when it doesn't literally change the building. So it, there might be a way that we could say follow the guidelines of. That, that is done. Yeah. Equivalent? Yeah, I, equivalent? I, yeah, I mean, I am lead AP and I have done a, a lead building. Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. But, uh, and a lot, of, a lot of projects do decide for, for the amount, you know, uh, to save money or the paperwork to say you're certifiable. But again, I don't know that that's getting you to being a highly energy efficient. Right. right. Uh, energy star. As a well, isn't that less than the stretch code in some cases? Or? I think the stretch code incorporates that. I think I the think stretch code, too. using what we have, the stretch code and maybe doing a little more than that is the avenue to go down versus I had an issue with the, with the, the lead as well because almost by default now, good design is sustainable design it might not be 
it might be a, on a par with the uh, certification, but the process of getting certified is an, is an arduous one and can take several months, and there's a cost that goes to that. And Tens of it thousands. doesn't necessarily mm -hmm. increase the sustainable design or, or mm -hmm. you know, the, the amount of energy that the building uses. So, um, yeah, I think the focus should be more on, on what the city has to work with, with stretch codes and so forth, versus, versus an actual certification. Um, what, what do you think would be a, um, maybe a comparable or a goal for um, stretch code for, you know, if we could do a percentage over that, what, how would, have you thought about yeah, what language that would be? Yeah, oh, I, I, I could look into it. I, I don't know, 15% comes to mind. I'm not sure where I'm pulling that from, if okay. that's from. Okay. Yeah, it's hard to define. You know, we could talk to a, a hers raider too. Would probably have a good idea. Um, and so, how would that relate to that next one that talks about that offer of the option of bringing your hers rating down to? I'm sorry, I just lost my thing here. Well, net zero. Well, yeah. God bless the developer. <laughs> no, no kidding. I know. I know. <laughs> uh -huh. It's well, possible, I mean, it's, it, it'll yeah, never be we, we actually hear more and more people talking about wanting to achieve that goal in their development um, scheme. So I don't know. Uh, it seems to me that that m might be coming, <laughs> you know, that's coming, going to become more frequent or more frequent goal. Frequent um, goal, I can see. More frequent, I can see. I mean, not, <laughs> just not now, not yeah. in the immediate future. Okay. Um, what kind of car do you drive? Why? <laughs> <laughs> Could you be driving one that's significantly more efficient? I mean, it seems to me that some of these requirements are a little on the harsh side compared to what you would do if you were building a private house. Because, I mean, I, I think it's an ideal goal, but uh, if you really want to take it all away, you should just require zero carbon footprint. Well, I, I think the LEED certification is unduly harsh. And I don't think it, it that in and of itself gets what the intent is to, to, to right. achieve. And the certification costs just just to send them the dues yeah. for it, the thousands of dollars you could right. be putting into energy saving right. devices. Right. There's no I mean there's no incentive, there's very little incentive for a developer for anyone. Um, it's a very limited lead certification. Um, the in incentive other than a nice plaque on the wall or for marketing or so forth. It doesn't change the design. It doesn't change anything. It's just a certification. There's some public buildings, libraries, and so forth. There are programs that if you reach a certain level of LEED certification, you get you get money back. And that's great. Um, but that doesn't apply here. And it's it would be hard to make that a requirement. I don't, I, 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 I don't agree that we should make that a requirement because mm -hmm. it's unduly hard. Um, but I don't know what the other <coughs> So looking at this as, as uh, you know, a developer, is one just like some jump out of you, like, oh, this is this is the easy one, this is the low hanging fruit that everyone's going to pick. Like, if it's not truly equal options, then maybe there's no point in doing it. If people are always going to pick the same thing. Right. I mean, the net zero is not the option people are going to go to. They're not going to go toward lead certification, okay. and so that you know you end up with a small, gross uh, footprint. Um, or the affordability. Or the affordability. Or the affordability. Those right. two things are sort of alternative versions of themselves. I mean, smaller Some places as well. They can be. They can be, right. Right. I, I think a, a percentage, uh, you know, uh, energy efficiency over the stretch code, I, th I think that's realistic. Mm. And I think it's what, I think it's what you, you, you do in the energy section of leads. Um, right. so, so I think that could, that could serve almost what, what you're trying to get at in A and B. Mm -hmm. And have it be a viable option mm -hmm. for people. I mean, Absolutely. truly, I mean, these days it doesn't take much design effort to reach a design that's certifiable without going through the whole process. Because it just makes sense from a building and, and future maintenance standpoint to have something with and high R values and a building envelope and so forth. So. How does that compare to stretch code? Like it a surpasses lead a lead, cer lead certified. 
it, it'll, it will meet or surpass the stretch code, but we could, we could take a percentage and try to figure out what percentage is a goal that's achievable that will, that will be better than just baseline stretch code, but is, it, but is yet achievable mm -hmm. without being burdensome. It, yeah, in fact, may, maybe we refer to the, that, that lead section um, in energy uh, usage and, be, and see what those points are for what the percentage of savings is and then mm -hmm. pick something out of that. Okay, I'm just wondering if then maybe we could use that sort of as a benchmark for what that percentage over stretch code would be. Mm -hmm. So we could do some more work on that mm -hmm. to see what the comparison is. Okay. And you're not worried about groundwater and I mean, you know, it sliced out that piece that we're trying to get to. Right. Um, now's the time to have the conversation though, can we, if, if we as a community have set stretch code as our building target, which we have, then can we pick a certain place in the, in the statutes and say, well, and we want more than that? Is there any, well, I, I mean, that's a we can't, naive question. No, 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 it's not. I mean, zoning can't regulate what's normally regulated under the building code. So, you know, stretch code is clearly building code um, regulation. This is special permit, so that's why we can't dictate what, how you build because we can't, we can't cross that path, but so because it's a special permit and you're asking for these sort of additional things, then we have more flexibility to say, here are some options we really, you need to consider you know, that have to do with energy efficiency. Okay, I got it, thank you. Um, so, okay, well, we can take a look at that. I can talk with um, the building commissioner and see what um, his take is yeah. on sort of how we might get above that. Okay. Okay. Um, so then number nine, a special permits filed under this provision may be submitted for review and approval prior to and separately from a fully engineered site plan so long as the following items are identified in a preliminary site plan with a special permit application and full detailed engineered site plans are filed for review and approval prior to commencement of any of construction. So this is sort of, um, this is trying to enable applicants to go through and sort of see what their, whether or not they're gonna be able to get a special permit from the board before they spend thousands right. of dollars right. on engineered plans. I've We've had that issue before. before. Yeah. yeah. And since we haven't, uh, like you said, we've had that issue before, but we haven't really specified um, what, how it's allowed, whether it's allowed, and so there's always been this gray area about whether you can do it first or you right. have to do it later. So um, this sort of makes it legal in this context to say you can go first with your special permit so long as we have the following things identified, and then you can come back later for your very um, fully engineered detailed plans. Um, and then those um, items would, for the initial review, would be roadway and driveway alignment, um, showing standards with the connect, showing compliance with the connectivity standards that were identified um, in items one through seven, uh, buffers and preliminary landscape by the existing neighborhoods, proposed location of park and open spaces, um, building envelopes and location and anticipated building types and number of units, uh, um, t total number of units. Any, in any special permit approval granted with only a preliminary site plan, the board may establish thresholds in which amendment of that special permit is required either prior to or in parallel with review of the fully engineered plans. Um, and again, this is sort of to tighten up um, and almost like a flag or a placeholder for the board when they're approving a special permit under these circumstances to specifically identify what's gonna trigger amendment. We've seen that recently about an issue about whether or not special permit was, should be triggered and it's, you know, it, it can, it's not always clear at those, those points. So that's why we added this proposed language. Okay. And then we felt like A through E, the items that you'd have to submit are really sort of bubble diagrams maybe a little bit more detailed so that the neighborhood gets a sense of where things are going to be located, what the total number of units are going to be, where's the, um, where are the open space areas, um, 
you know, enough of that information to say, does this project make sense in this right. neighborhood? Yeah, that, I'm good with that because we've had that issue before where it's just a lot of effort to get an engineered set just to get to find out mm -hmm. if you can move forward. You know? yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So, that's it. Can I go back to number eight? I, there's something wrong with the syntax. It doesn't, building shall, and it says 50, like number E. I don't know, what does that mean? Buildings shall 50% or more of the units no larger than 1,200 square feet. You mean a right. verb is what yeah. you're saying. What? Should have, no, the verb. word have should Wait, be before 50%. Percent. What, Mark? The word have should be before 50%. So building shall have or... Yeah, have 50% okay. uh, or something like that. Yeah, I see what you're saying. So I think all of them need, except the first two need okay. something. Okay. <coughs> except they're going to change. Right. right. Yes. Okay, thanks. We're going to miss you, Fred. <laughs> 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 That's end of session two. I know. I'm sorry, I didn't hear. I'm going to miss you. Oh. I, I'll come and uh, put in my... I will send you, you send all of my um, ordinances. ordinances. Or send the minutes out minutes before... Yeah, right. To you first, uh, before I send it to the board. Okay, I'll proofread them. Okay. I'll have plenty of time. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so that's good. So we're not going to, oh, this is just the, in the ordinance form. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not quite ready to. Okay. Sure. I'll bring it back to you with that language about the um, stretch code before okay. we send it to council. Okay. So I'll have to hurry up and do that because we're getting closer and closer to July. <laughs> um, so did I send you minutes? Were there minutes? Once We've got one set of minutes from January 23rd. Yeah. Lots and lots of pages. Oh, do I have an extra page? Yes. That was, was a good, that? That was oh. good meeting. That was the uh, four, Maple Street. Four pages. That was a good meeting. <clears throat> okay. I move we approve the minutes of January 23rd, <laughs> 2014. Second. Second, Jen. All in favor? Oh, we have this, too. Augie Meadows Road. Oh, gosh, thanks. Okay, so this is um, I don't know why I had, I guess I did need to put this on the agenda. Um, I thought I was waiting for more information, but I don't have the exact points yet. Um, but so there was a petition you guys looked at. Did we talk about this before? Okay, we skipped a meeting. Okay. With so snow out, we were snowed out. Yeah, so oh. um, um, we, we did a street petition. You guys are, um, looked at a street petition um, for Cook Avenue mm -hmm. a couple of meetings ago. And, um, and that went up to the edge of um, the Mo old Moose Lodge, which is um, also, there's an easement a trail access to Fitzgerald Lake. Mm -hmm. So um, during that conversation, there were a group of property owners back in there off of what is referred to as Boggy Meadow Road, but it's really the trail. Um, it's an old woods road back in there. Um, asked DPW if they could just attach that section onto the Cook Avenue request for street acceptance. And Board of Public Works said, no, you can't do that. So then they came back and formally petitioned for that dirt path to be um, a street, to become a street. Um, and so it's it's Boggy Manor Road. So what you um, w what I have here is this memo um, from Wayne um, about the street acceptance, and I'll just um, read it into the record. A petition for street acceptance of 316.2 foot portion of a trail known as Boggy Meadows Road was filed with City Council. The Office of Planning and Sustainability recommends against accepting this as a street for several reasons. This never functioned as a road. This trail is never um, uh, is simply a gravel narrow right of way that abutters have shared rights and access to. Street acceptance is not a substitute for subdivision approval. 
Uh, the proper way to make a trail with no history of being a road into a road is to file subdivision approval, build the road to subdivision standards, and then petition for street acceptance. Um, there's no right of way available, although there are shared rights of access to the trail. Under um, derelict fee statute, the abutting property owners own to the center line of the trail. And this means that half the trail is owned by Northampton Conservation Commission, and they have not granted permission for the right of way, and such right of way would require an eminent domain taking and damages. Um, and then finally, um, state legislative approval is required because the land is partially owned by Conservation Commission. It would take an Article 97 amendment to the state constitution for any conversion of conservation land to another purpose. Um, so for those reasons, our office recommends the board, that city council not accept it, and certainly that the planning board recommends city council not accept that portion of Boggy Matter Road. I mean, we've had a lot of roads come before us that it was just based on our opinion. What do you, what do you think? Is it a road? Is it not a road? Without a lot of backup, this mm -hmm. seems clear to me this yeah. is not a road. If you walk it, you know it's not yeah, a road. It's, yeah. I've never actually been on it. Are, are there houses? There must be houses. No, no it's just a, it's no. just a, it's a walking path. So who wants it turned into a road and why? The landowners that abut it further back behind the Moose Lodge because uh -huh. then that, sure. once you have a street, then you have frontage and then you could come in and potentially develop it, even ah. though there are wetlands and steep Got slopes it. and all right. sorts of things. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. That seems easy. Do you foresee that the abutters will restrict access to people who currently use <clears throat> that as a walking trail? No, because it's already written into, uh, there's rights of passage. Okay. There's conservation property on half of it. Right. right. Uh, I'm going to recuse myself from this because before I knew where the hell Boggy Meadow <laughs> Road was, I talked to one of the abutters about it, one of the landowners. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you need a recommendation from us tonight? Yes. A vote. Somebody want to make that recommendation? I don't think I've got the agenda. It's not on the agenda. Um, wing it. I move we recommend to City Council that Boggy Meadow, Boggy Meadow, Road. Me Meadow Road not be approved. Trail. 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 Yeah, yeah. Trail. yeah. <laughs> not be accepted as a public way. That sets the tone, doesn't it? <laughs> Second. <clears throat> Second. <clears throat> Second hand. All in favor? Randy recused. Okay. That's all I've got. That's all I have. Jen? I'll make a motion. I uh, move that we adjourn. I second. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? We're adjourned. Oh.